Hey there. So, <clears throat> maybe you're thinking to yourself, self, how do I make closet shelves for my pantry? Simple. You get some one by two that you can buy at the store. Or I suppose you can make it if you grow your own trees and then have a sawmill and all that, but I'm assuming you're just gonna buy at the store. So you get that, you find your studs, it's important. Now come closer, you listen. Listen. This sounds solid. That's a stud, which it is. Now listen. Hollow. Solid. There's a stud right there. So you find your studs and that way you're not, you don't just want to be in the sheetrock, you don't want to be like actually in there. Okay, so we make this shape right here. And then what do we use that for? Oh, this is gonna blow your mind. That's right. Then we put a shelf on there. Now, once again, you can grow your own sawdust and put it together like an Ikea piece of furniture or just go buy it. It's your choice. All right, now I'm gonna step on some toes here. If you're a parent and you feed your children frozen pizza or frozen chicken nuggets, you're a horrible parent. I'm sorry. Like, I know that a lot of you are gonna get mad at me, but find the time to microwave that stuff. I mean, seriously, that's hard on your kid's teeth. You're better. Oh, hey there. Now, perhaps you're thinking to yourself, self, how do I put in a doorknob and a doorstop? Never fear, I'll show you. First, you buy one. That's the easy part. Now it gets really complicated. I'm gonna have to speed this up later to show you how to do this. Okay, a doorknob has six screws. You open up the package. You take the screw and you put them in your mouth. That way you get enough iron in your diet. A lot of people are anemic, but I'm not because I have a lot of iron in my diet, which is amazing. Now this probably takes longer than doing the rest of the doorknob, but I'm willing to take the sacrifice for you. Okay, so now we've got the door cut, okay? You want to put it in there so that it, uh, it catches on the door. There's two ways you can go. If you got some nonsense around it, we'll get that out of the way. Okay. Now you take two of your small screws and you put them in there. You're a third of the way done. Okay, now this is called a strike plate. It's what this thing catches on to. This goes in here like this. You take your other two small screws. Hopefully you have a drill. For all the Amish people watching this, I'm sorry, I'll have to do this by hand. John, is them Amish? I'm pretty sure they're men tonight, Alan. They're men at night! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, they have these black things that's to guide your screws in, they're a waste of time, they're frustrating. Obviously you want the lock to be on the inside of the door because science. Okay, now. You see how this lines up in the hole? Amazing. On the other side, I'm gonna do a similar thing, okay? Then you get your last two screws, the longer ones. This is really actually the trickiest part, but it's not that tricky. I'm gonna line it up with the holes inside there. Now I know you'll be tempted to use a drill on this part. And then you're gonna strip out your screws, and you're gonna be frustrated with me, and you're gonna say things like this. John, it didn't work for me. And I'm gonna be like this. Did you use your fingers? Because you need to use your fingers. So, you get it screwed in, you know, pretty good. And then, you get a screwdriver, which I assume you have on your back pocket. And if you don't, I will rent you a screwdriver for twice the cost of buying a new screwdriver. Because that's how rentals work. I hope that's a good lesson to you to not rent things. If you're going to need to use something three times, just buy it. Um, that's my policy. And that's why I have tons of tools. All right. Now that is how you put in a doorknob. But you're, that's not all. Okay, that's, that's a lot, obviously. Um, right here, it rubs a little bit. Okay, so we're going to fix that. <clears throat> I've showed you this before, but in case you didn't see it. Right here, there's a gap. Right here is tight. So now we fix that. We want to go up that direction. So, we're going to take out one of these screws right here and replace it with a longer screw. And let's see if that did any magic. Well, look at that. 
That's just amazing. Now, what about a door stop? I'm going to reach way back deep into your memory banks and show you one of these kind of door stops because I like them better. So you unscrew this, and then inside of that, there's a screw. Magical, okay? Now, you want the door stop to win, but your door's going to hit because that's just how science works. And these door stops are cool for a lot of reasons. One, uh, breezy blind. And two, so there's kind of a spring on there, and you just spin it back on there. It's pretty simple. Two, because they come with a free Viagra sound effect. Oh, hey there. Uh, so today, come closer. Let's take a look. We got these corners in. Okay, so cabinets are um, interesting because whenever you get into a corner, you can either put a lazy Susan, which they were out of stock, shocker. Uh, thanks, supply chain issues. Or you can do this. And so we take a couple of these finish boards and we put them together and then we put them back in the back. Now we still have to put a board across here and we still have to put a skeleton in here because one day somebody's gonna take these cabinets out and they're gonna be like this. Ah! And I'm gonna be like this. <laughs> that was me because that's hilarious. We can put one there too. Maybe a baby skeleton and like a dog skeleton. I don't know, something. Maybe a stuffed animal. We're gonna put something in that's funny. Maybe a note like a time capsule. Anyway, we did that. We had to put a spacer here, so you can see you have a cabinet. You put a spacer and do another one. And we had to do the same thing over here because it didn't line up to exactly where cabinets land, so we put a spacer again, and then this right here. And then um, Fidel's gonna come and measure granite tomorrow, so that'll be fantastical. And um, once he gets granite on, we can do backsplash. We're gonna do um, hood that microwave, and stove, dishwasher, sink, blah, blah, garbage disposal, and a fridge over here. This is a cool place to have a fridge. Um, this was Trevor's idea. Uh, we're building a house for Trevor and for Hannah. Their um, last name is White. Therefore, it's going to be the White House. Now, it's not the White House in Washington, D.C. Just let's clear that up. But we're going to put the fridge in here, and then it will just feel like, you know, the wall is flat. I think that's brilliant because, you know, I'm easily impressed by things. Um, okay, so last week I was working for Frog Street, and one of the things that somebody said is that a lot of people are great, okay, on camera or in front of a crowd or on the stage or whatever. But whenever the camera turns off, they get off stage or whatever, they're not nice people. But it's more rare for somebody to be good. And that means that even when there's no cameras around, even when nobody's watching, there's no social media and there's no PR or whatever, that you're still good to people. You're good to your waitress and you're good to your cashier and you're good to the people that work for you and the people that you work for and your customers, clients, whatever, uh, your family. Um, I think that's way more important to be good. And really anybody can be great because anybody can serve. So I hope that helps you guys out. We're going to have a, a drive home and then I'm going to edit some more on that video. And it, fun, fun fact about this video. Okay. So it's um, uncomfortably warm is the name of the video. And there's a Pink Floyd song called comfortably numb completely different meanings. Comfortably numb, I'm pretty sure has to do with heroin. Uncomfortably warm has to do with this heat. And here's what happens. I come out here to work, I immediately am covered in sweat. I'm just dripping with sweat all the time. I go into my hot studio, right? And it's 110 degrees or whatever. I can't sweat to save my life when I'm supposed to. I was like, this is stupid. Then I go outside, I'm like, oh, it's 110 degrees outside. I'll go out here, stand in the sunlight. No sweat. I'm like, are you kidding me? So I had to hose myself. First I went in the sink and got wet. Wasn't wet enough. So then I hosed myself down. I'm like, this isn't even close to how wet I normally get. This is still gonna be a good video. I'm really excited about it. All right, see you guys. Okay, there. Now maybe you're thinking to yourself, self, I've got a dilemma. Come here. How am I gonna cut a hole right there, right in the middle of this tile? Seems impossible. The wet saw just is like a big circle. Like, how do you do that? Doesn't make sense. <laughs> unless you have the right tools. So <clears throat> this thing right here is a template. You put on there, it's got a sticker on it, right? And so then that sticks onto your tile and um, then you pour water into it. Now it has to be racetrack purified water. It can be any water, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and then it comes with a drill bit and that's got a, a diamond blade on it, right? And so then that thing, because it doesn't have a pilot hole because it's ceramic, then that just goes right in there and then it drills a hole and looks like that. And it cuts out a slug that looks like this right here. 
And then you're like, I could probably use this in a, maybe like a slot machine or something like that. You put it in there and be like, I didn't win. Hmm. Who would have thunk it? You know, when I walk into a uh, casino, I always look around, I'm like, look at all these winners. Like you see them and they're like, <sighs> pull out more money and put it in there. And I'm just like, wow, what a bunch of winners. Like it, it makes me jealous. Anyway, I oh, hey there. You guys are probably thinking, I wonder what John's been up to. He hasn't made enough videos. I feel lonely. Huh? We laid this tile today and uh, we were a little bit short on the floor, but we did all these walls and uh, and the curb and most of the floor and the bench. Obviously we put the shower faucets back in, which is amazing, but is that all we did? No, we also did around this bathtub. Look, yay, truly amazing. Um, we also did another bathroom. I'll show you that in a second. And we did, oh, a bunch of closet shelves here. Come here. Not all of them, but take a look around this. We did all these shelves here, and then shelves and whatnot, and then this is a big closet. <laughs> so earlier today, Fidel and, and one of his guys were by here, and I said, uh, how many Mexicans do you think you could fit in this house? And he goes, this is a pretty big house. We probably put 100 Mexicans in here. I was like, well, they're going to have two skinny white people and one little baby. And he's just like, what? <laughs> he was quite upset. Anyway, so we're going to... Um, I'll show you the other bathroom in a minute. All right, where you guys been? It took me like nine seconds to get over here. I'm a little bit lonely. All right, so we also um, did this tile, but to be honest with you, it's getting late, and you know, we're kind of over it today. So uh, we're gonna stop there tomorrow. We'll finish this up, and we'll do some other things, put the appliances in, and things like that. Um, <clears throat> so I wanna talk to you guys about working as unto the Lord, okay? The Bible talks about this. Um, it says, you should work as unto the Lord. And I think a lot of people probably don't do that. It even says, if you're a slave, to treat your slave master as if they were the Lord, like work as if they were the Lord. And I think that, um, you know, we we don't do that enough. Uh, it's real easy to start hating your boss and, you know, thinking he doesn't give me enough, blah, 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 or the company doesn't or whatever, and they deserve to get treated badly. You know, employee theft is the biggest um, theft that there is on most corporations. Um, and it, it, people are just grumble and complain and hate their bosses and whatever. And I'm like, you know, it really shows in your work. Like, I hate to dog on Home Depot because I do love Home Depot, but good Lord, since COVID started, it used to be that they were proud of their aisles. They were like, this is my section. I care about plumbing. And they'd be like, I keep my stuff stocked when nobody's around and I don't have anything to do because there's, you know, lulls in the day. I take things down from up high and put them down and make sure there's enough. If, there's, if we're low on something, I'm, I'm familiar with my customers. I know what to get. And they, there's always enough. Since COVID, I mean, I realize there's supply chain issues or whatever in the world nonsense they're making up, but it is out of control. Every day we go and three different times we're going to be like, don't worry, we'll find it in the overhead bins. Then we'll get a forklift driver. And it takes an hour and a half or longer sometimes. It's very frustrating. But then you can just tell they don't really care. They're just like, hmm. Let me check another store for you. And I'm like, how about be engaged in your job? Like whatever your job is, like be engaged in it and care about it and work as unto the Lord, because I think that's very important. You can tell the people that do, and you're like, wow, you are a delight. You are a delight to be around when I enjoy that. So you guys probably noticed that it rained outside and uh, it's a little bit off topic, but Drew and I, a lot of people don't realize this, are very good dancers, okay? And um, not like we don't booty dance, or we don't twerk or anything like that, maybe sometimes, but we're very good ring dancers. And so the key to doing a good ring dance is to make it look like it's been raining over your body already. And that lets the rain know like in my heart, I'm already wet from the rain, but I need you Sky to produce some more water to fall onto the ground so that we can burn our trash. <laughs> so you wanna take a look here. It's very exciting. Look, the ground is wet. It's cool outside China. There's drips on my truck. The rain is coming out of the gutter because we don't have end caps because we're about to do the um, the rainwater collection system. So we're pretty excited about that. Day after tomorrow, we're doing that one. And this house is real close to being done. So have a great night. I'll probably edit some more on that video on Comfortably Warm tonight because I got a phone call. It was like, when are you going to get that done? I want to see it. So we'll do that. Love you guys. Bye. Oh, hey there. Um, <clears throat> so. It has occurred to me that even though I showed you how to put in a, put in a microwave, probably some of you guys didn't see that video or videos. So um, 
making a difference is what subtraction is all about. Let me show you. There's templates like this. And uh, you tape that up there and then it shows where it really holes, which I drilled my holes, bang, bang, bang. So there's a 3 8 hole here and a 3 8 hole here and an inch and a half hole here. This is what your plug goes through and then goes into the, out ah, right there. Then the, um, the microwave sits on these two little things right here. And then you go up and you screw these two things to it and, uh, and then it holds it up in there and then you plug it in and that's really it. It's not very hard. So <clears throat> my question for you guys is this, are you ready to stop fighting God? This is a battle that you cannot win. You think, I'll beat you, I'll wait you out. He's got eternity. What do you got? Hours, minutes, days, months, years, we don't know, decades possibly. But you really want to spend all your life like fighting God or you want to just get it right? I would go with just get it right. Because once you realize like, I'm, I'm gonna fight you, I'm gonna fight you, I'm gonna fight you, and then you stop, you're like, oh, this is actually much better. My life is a lot better. Huh, I'm happy now. Like, yeah, stop fighting God. All right, we're gonna get back to work. Oh, hey there. So, <clears throat> we got the microwave in. It took moments, um, and it's pretty simple. You just plug it in up there, and then set the clock, and that's pretty much it. But, also in the meantime, Fidel was here measuring, and so, then we went ahead and brought the fridge in. Now, uh, the fridges are magical because they bring, they've got some kind of a portal, I don't understand it. They get air from somewhere colder, uh, I'm assuming Alaska, unless they get it from Siberia or something. And you feel in here and you're like, ooh, that feels like it's coming straight from the Arctic North. Now, I don't get that, but it's magical. So that's why they're expensive. Now, there's handles on these things. A lot of you are like, how do I take the handles off? Because you might have to, to get through a door or something like that. See this door we had to take off? Mm -hmm. So here's how it works. You see these two screws are already put in? They go in right here, and then there's Allen wrenches. Now, Allen's not here to use his wrenches, sadly, but this is how it works, okay? They go into place. And then you tighten the Allen wrenches. That's it. Not hard. Anybody can do it. Not anybody, but definitely me. All right, let's get it. Perhaps you're thinking to yourself, self, what is this thing? Come closer. First of all, this is a water heater. It is not a hot water heater. It's kind of redundant. It's like saying an ATM machine. ATM stands for automatic teller machine. So saying it's an automatic teller machine machine is kind of stupid. It's saying it's a hot water heater. If the water's already hot, you don't need to heat it. So anyway, it's a water heater. So your cold water comes in where it's blue. I don't know if you guys know these color codes, but blue is cold and red is hot. Then there's a shutoff valve. So if you need to turn it off and work on it, you can. It comes in, then your hot water comes out there. There's heating elements here and here. This is where your power comes in. There's a, drain, there's a pan and there's a drain that goes outside. But what is this thing right here? This is called a TMP valve. And Drew said to me, what is TMP? He thought it was toilet and paper. It's incorrect. <laughs> it's temperature and pressure. So before they had these, let's just say that um, your water heater, not your hot water heater, got too hot. And it was like, and it was under a lot of pressure. You're like, is my whole house gonna explode? Or all the pipes in my house gonna burst from the heat and the pressure? Is the tank gonna explode? Is there gonna be a big problem? Relax, TNT valve. If there's too much temperature or pressure, it just goes pop, and then water goes and it goes outside. And that's how that works. It's truly amazing. If you want to test it, there's not a lot of water in here right now because we're still in a dehydrated house. But if you want to test it, you just go, and then when it's sticking out, then it's you know letting water out, and it'll just it releases the pressure and it goes out. And when it's like that. You're good to go. Don't do that unless you know what, what you're talking about, but that's, that's what that's for, so. Oh, hey there. So, maybe you're thinking to yourself, self, how do you wire up a 220 outlet, like a dryer plug? Well, I'm glad you asked. I assume that you probably don't know this, otherwise you wouldn't be watching this, or maybe you just wanna see if I'm gonna say something stupid, which I probably will. All right, so, I've already checked that the breaker's off, and it is, and we've already hot tested it, and it's not, so. In a 220, you've got, and this is 10 gauge wire, you've got a hot, your black is hot, your red is another hot, so that's a, that's a 110 and another 110 for a total of 220. And then your white is neutral and your uh, bare wire is ground, okay? So on the back of this, you can see there's brass screw, brass screw, those say X and Y, or A and B, whichever. And that's gonna be where your two hots go. One in there, one in there. And then your white is gonna go to where your silver screw and your uh, ground is gonna go to green, okay? So that's what you do, you put this in the back. I'll just put one in here so you can see it. And um, we, it's hard for me to do this and show it to you, but I have 
cafe there like that and then we tighten that up and it's important that it's um tight because if you get if your wires are loose then um that can start fires which we don't want that you're better than that um, so if you're ever in a position where you're like man I, this is what it boils down to right being useless is the luxury of the rich and you're not rich so i'm showing you how to do this stuff yourself so that you can figure it out save some money and then buy something nice for yourself like i don't know go out and buy yourself a nice macaroni and cheese dinner or whatever it is spam do people still eat spam i think they only made one one order of spam ever and then um you know that people just been re-gifting it, kind of like fruitcake. People are like, yeah, you know what, you want some fruitcake? I'll give you this one. Somebody gave it to me. I hate it. Um, it I think it's probably hard as a brick at this point. It might be like diamonds. I don't know. You might get in there and be like, this is amazing. Okay, so you can see there, you got brass screw red, brass screw black, silver screw white, green screw brown. Okay. And then once you take that, jam it in there. And then we'll just, we put four screws there, and we'll put one of these cool covers on it like that, and we're done. Easy cheesy. All right, hope you guys learned something. Oh, hello there. So, <clears throat> we're at the back of the stove, and maybe you're thinking to yourself, self, how do I wire up the back of the stove? Is this super complicated? Do geniuses work on this? No, it's pretty simple. All right, so look, just like when we were on the other stuff, green is ground, white is neutral, black is hot, red is the other hot, okay? so. How do we figure this out? Hmm, oh, I've got it. We could just color code this stuff and go, um, I think we'll put the white one on here. Boom, and the red one on here, and the black one on here, and the green one down there. And then we tighten this up, make sure it's tight. And then um, you'll be like, wow, that works. Because what ends up happening is those wires, I know this is must be amazing for you guys, <clears throat> those wires connect to these prongs and these prongs go into those holes and when they do it connects hot to hot you know and then neutral and ground and then it goes in here and there's a circuit board that that makes stuff work so you guys learned something yet again write down the date i'm pretending like this is a big deal but it's not so this is a dishwasher i don't know if you've ever seen one a lot of people think it's just a woman that's not nice gender roles should not be specific it's just doing a job all right so <clears throat> dishwashers are pretty simple you got water coming in you got water going out you got electricity that's really it okay so this is a supply line this comes from a shutoff valve under the sink we drill a hole through the cabinet bring it down here and this thing screws on okay this is compression so you don't need pipe dope so i already tighten this up then this is just like a hose but it's got a, a rubber seal in there it's truly really amazing pop your head in here so you can see uh, it's difficult i got this stupid box in here so that normally drew would be holding this up but he's holding the camera because He's amazing like that, okay? So, boom, that's tight. Now, on this other side, this right here is your power cord, okay? And I, of course, have permission from my plumber and my electrician here standing by, supervising me to make sure I'm doing it right. But, because they know me forever, they trust me. So, this goes here. Then, once again, black, white, and ground, okay? So typically I do ground first because, you know, science. And, um, that looks like this. Put a wire nut on there. In case you guys don't know what a wire nut is, it's that thing right there. Now orange is for small wires, and then yellow is for like 14 gauge wires, which is pretty much outlawed now, sadly. And then um, red is for 12 gauge wire, which is pretty much what you're gonna be using most of the time. And then blues are for bigger wires. As far as the color of the wire nut, that's what size you can use, okay? So green is to green, white is to white, black is to black. It's not racist, it's just color coded. Now, once that's done, oh, paperwork. Once that's done, this stuff will be wired back in the box. 
and we're good to go. Um, there's a front cover that goes on this, okay? And um, I'm not gonna bore you with all the details, but let me just show you up here. So then we take the, um, the hose and we drill a hole through this cabinet, which we have not done yet. This gets plugged in to this outlet, which is pretty simple. And then this is our drain. Okay, so on the drain, it's important that um, you go up high with the drain because you don't want water sitting down in the belly because you'll get sticky water in there. And you're better than that. So we drill a hole up high and then it comes down and then it goes into the side of the, dish, the garbage disposal. So we don't have the garbage disposal hooked up yet, but um, where the garbage disposal is, this would hook into that and then it would clamp down. Um, at which point, when this drains, it drains into the garbage disposal and then you can turn on your garbage disposal and run stuff and, you know, get it all out of there and then it drains from there. So that's how it works. Water coming in, I guess we saw my felt in here, which we haven't hooked up yet. Power and then drink. That's it. You learned something. Okay there. I know you're looking for turtles. So a lot of you guys are like, John, is there a cheaper way for me to do backsplash tile? And the answer is yes. We were at Family Dollar trying to get some soap and we found this stuff. Look, you can just put this on. You don't have to use mortar. You don't have to have a wet saw. It's very thin. It's self-adhesive and it's only a dollar. You just peel that and stick it right to the wall. Or I guess at least try to make it square or something. Or there's other options and not just this stone one. There's um, this tile one. Oh, this is nice. It's flexible. I think you could probably cut this with um, a rock or maybe some scissors, maybe some other paper. I don't know. But how nice is that, huh? I guess I've been doing it wrong this whole time. I might go and just get some of this stuff. Um, yeah. All right, see you guys later. Oh, hey there, come closer. So, as you can see, we got a whole bunch of new tires on here. Not tires, wheels. Um, boom. This is not a good tape measure. Boom, 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 boom. The other side, the other side, all over. And then we got new tracks on here. And then we did the same thing on the other side. Super simple. All I gotta do is get Alan and Drew. <clears throat> this is a good opportunity to talk about the fact that everybody's important. And sometimes people are like, I'm not that important, but you are, and your input matters. So speak up because we were fighting this thing like crazy. And then Drew was like, I watched a video. And we're all like, tell me more. And then he told us more. In fact, he showed us, he's like, get out of my way, you little girls. Let me show you how it's done. And they like manhandled it. And we're all like, Drew, where did that come from? He's like, from my muscles. And then here we are. So we got both the tracks on, come on, dude. And then Alan is about as smart as everybody in the world combined. Mechanically speaking, like, I don't know anybody better. So, Alan's great, Drew's great, and Bobcat's ready because we got water system coming in tomorrow. So, I'm very excited. Yay! Whew.